I'm in Kent, near Canterbury. Got a couple of days that I get out, a bit of a ride. I was supposed to be up in the Peak District, but there's been so much rain. There's been some big storms through the UK. And I thought the trails would be all boggy and muddy and I think there's still more rain to come. As if there isn't here. So yes, down in Canterbury, more of a road ride. Thought I'd get out on the Kona, the new bike, give that a try. Because I do have some bigger trips coming up. I need to make sure it works out okay. Should be a good little trip. It's only about 60, 70 miles, something like that. It was a last minute thing, but uh, yeah, it should be a nice, nice little trip. The weather's a bit dodgy at the moment, but it's supposed to brighten up today at least. Tomorrow is going to be bad again, but you know, if you don't go riding in the rain in the UK, you don't go riding. It's the next day. After I said that about riding in the rain or not riding at all, I chose not to ride at all. Very strange. I sat in the van for about an hour and uh, just came to the conclusion I didn't feel like going for a ride, which is uh, strange because it wasn't as if it was just down the road. It was a two and a half hour drive back home, which I made. And then I spent most of the day ruminating and trying to figure out exactly what happened. And trust me, this isn't one of those burnt out sort of videos. I haven't done enough for a start, and I'm not. It's the entire, it's the exact opposite of that. I don't really know why I didn't feel like the ride. It could have been as simple as the rain was coming in that night and it was gonna be sopping wet in the morning. And maybe I just didn't feel like camping in that, riding in it tomorrow. That sounds unusual but for me, because I'm not, you know, scared of the rain or anything. But who knows? I just didn't want to do the ride. So anyway, I came back home and then, uh, yeah, as I said, threw up lots of questions. And YouTube in particular is something that I do predominantly for myself. I was thinking yesterday, I've spent a lot of money on gear and, you know, stuff for making these videos. Now, if I chucked all of that in the bin and stopped making videos right now, it would all be worth it because I have that record of the Great Divide. And that's something I'll have forever. But that also tells me that I enjoy making these videos and I enjoy documenting the trips I'm going on. And I have an awful lot lined up. Hopefully I'll actually do them and not abandon them. But uh, that's slightly tongue in cheek. Anyway, I'm going to Felix though. I love Felix though. I'm gonna go for either a walk or a little ride and I've got my bike so I'm going to show that to you as well and then I'm also going to talk about some of the things that I've got coming up. I've got some which are almost set in stone and some which aren't. That kind of follows doesn't it? Can you hear that rattle? I've been trying to find it for four years. Not that I'm obsessive or anything. I think I'm going to have to scrap the van. So I'm going to go for a quick ride along the seafront here, down to Langard Fort, and give you a quick tour of the bike. Don't really know what this video is. And I don't even know whether this one will come out. I've said that before. I'm just going to go over some of the trips I've got lined up. I can do that now, I guess. I've got this uh, European trip, which I've already mentioned which is where I ride from Ipswich to Calais, Ipswich to Dover, ferry to Calais, ride up through France, Holland, and then I get the ferry back to Harwich. So that's at the beginning of December. Then I'm considering in January flying over to Gran Canaria. I watched this guy 
who's created a route over there. It's not very long, but it looks quite uh, hilly, mountainous, I should say. It's very easy to get there from Britain. You can fly with one of the cheap airlines. So uh, I'm thinking that that's a week long trip, I'd imagine. And that's it so far, aside from, I think I'm leaning towards doing the European Divide, which is a ride from Norway, the top of Norway, all the way down to the south of Spain. I just fancy it. I think that's going to be August. Um, I need to commit to it now, really, because I need to work out the logistics and start researching it. I don't really know a lot about it. I just know it's long. It takes in a lot of Europe. And I'll be honest and say that I miss the long trail. Although I thought I was going to do shorter ones. I love the switching off for months on end sort of uh, feel. Just focusing on the simple things. Find somewhere to stop. these big circle things had practice guns this is a cool place come and visit definitely I've shown it to you endless times I know but uh, yeah I love it over here so I've stopped here by another defense of some sort the palace old they're all over the place on the coast here fascinating stuff right the bike here we go so it's a 2023 Kona Sutra it's a road touring bike but it can be made into a gravel bike mainly because it has such wide clearance on the forks and here at the back. So it can fit up to 2.2 inch tires. I'll never do that. But I might put some wider gravel tires on. It's got sort of hybrid tires that'll do everything at the moment. Um, let's see, yeah. So it's got, I put these MKS pedals on, the Lambdas. I use them on the GDMBR and they, I just like them. It's got a Shimano GRX group set. I think it's the cheapest one, the 400. So it's a gravel bike focus group set. But it's got road levers, Tiagra. It's got some nice drop bars, but it's got quite a high riding position, so that's handy. What else? I put the Ergon SMC seat on it. It's got a tubeless front rack, which it came with, um, which is great because I can put my tail fin panniers on there. These are the clean canteens, the big ones. So I've got this oversized bottle cage for that. I put all sorts of bags on there, obviously. These ones I really like. Oh, they're mud guards. Um, Portland Design Works. I've had lots of different mud guards and they've all been disappointing. And I don't like mud guards, but if you're gonna have to have them, I want ones that don't flex and you have to keep uh, adjusting. So these are rock solid. I mean, these are the best ones I've ever had. Oh yeah, the brakes. They've got these sort of weird TRP hybrid brakes. So they've got a, a brake cylinder. Is that the right word? Yeah. With the brake fluid, but they're mechanically operated. I like this bike. I haven't done much with it, but I like the fact that it's a do-it-all bike. I insured it the other day, uh, 50 pound for the year. And that's to insure it for its value, which I paid 1,250, believe it or not, super good deal. And a thousand pounds worth of equipment, 50 pounds a year. I've got to lock it with a, a gold lock, so I've got a, a huge lock for it, but it's worth it, I think. It means I am inclined to use it, park it in towns, just leave it. If it gets stolen, I'd be disappointed, but you know, it's not like my other one, my Sondra, if that got stolen, I'd be mortified.
so that is it that's the video thank you for watching now i'm gonna have my wholesome breakfast hmm one last thing uh, ross and i did a video recently where we um went for a ride and told a bit of a story and i really enjoyed it it was so much fun and uh, we definitely want to do more of those uh, but finding stories is difficult so if anyone has any good sort of stories that could be told as part of a ride any recommendations please let me know in the comments that would be fantastic i would really appreciate it thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next video hopefully with me out doing something either a hike or a ride or maybe a mixture of both hard to tell bye